Well, that completely epitomizes the exact opposite of what I said last week, doesn't it? <laughs> Back to winning ways, come on. Hey guys and welcome back to the CTFC Perspective and today's video is yes a match review of Cheltenham Town's 2-0 win against Salford City. That is the last three games against Salford, two wins, one draw and zero goals conceded and we're doing really well against the top six teams and the teams around them. This three points puts us in a really strong position to finish at the top of the table and the automatics at least obviously our next few games being the deciders but we will put that on screen later in the video but firstly you know like i said at the very start of the video this performance is the complete opposite the exact opposite to what we complained about and what we saw on our last time we stepped out on the pitch I don't know what it was. The pressing was absolutely on point. Everyone was full of energy. They wanted to score goals. They wanted to keep a clean sheet. Well, we did technically concede, but, you know, when the linesman and the referee make the correct decision, they're on our side, you know, respectably and actually doing the right thing, they scored a beautiful goal. I believe it was sort of overhead kick, scissor kick, but it was rightfully disallowed to be offside, which is absolutely great to see. So we still did keep that clean sheet with a 2-0 victory. Referring back to our goals, however, it was actually a beautiful play from Cheltenham, but if you're actually looking from a Salford point of view, you'd actually be very disappointed and you'd think it's sloppy mistakes which can be worked on in future. The first of which came very early. We got our business done early in this game and took control very, very early on straight from the get-go. It was around 1 minute 44, 2 minutes in, when we got a long throw opportunity. And you know what happens when Toza gets his towel out, wipes the ball and goes for the long throw. Beautiful place into the front post. And who's there? The man which scored the own goal in pretty much the exact same position in the last performance. Yes, that is right. Sean Log gets there in the right place at the right time and slots it into the front post with a well-placed header. And then the second goal, we kept to the very end of the first half where it was actually another beautiful piece of play, this time from Blair on that right-hand side, right wing area again, running down, cuts the ball across. The keeper gets a hand to it, really should be doing better though, in all fairness. He gets a hand to it, he palms it down into the danger area. And what's the first thing you should not do when you're a goalkeeper? Get the ball out of the danger area because you do not know what happened. It looked like it was just about to fizzle in, but who is there? The man of the moment, Circum. Slots it home to make it 2-0. But yeah, this game had it all. It had goals disallowed, it had beautiful team performances, it had big mistakes, it had head injuries, every single thing you could think of or want in a footballing game besides a hat trick or an own goal, let's say. But it was a beautiful performance from Cheltenham, less so from Salford. They're really not performing in the attacking areas. I believe they said it was two goals in the last five games or some crazy stat like that. They seem like they've got a very good footballing side. Like when they have the ball, they look very good, but they haven't got any rambunctious or just very big football players which do what they need to do get the business done you know just a little bit aggressive when the time comes to it or they need to just be scrappy or get something from it but nevertheless we're really happy and the stats were very much in Charlton's favor as you're going to see now so the only stat as you can see like I said about the way Salford play was in Salford's favor was possession they controlled 64% of the ball they just tried loads of pass in plays tried to break us down slowly but Charlton no if you whip it to the box we're beating you in the air if you need to have a, like a fight or a shoulder to shoulder we're beating you and even though we aren't the fastest of sides because we've got the wing backs and the attacking mids and the two strikers when we need to we can get that ball into the box or from a set piece and we will have someone there to tap it home that is why with 36 percent of the ball Charlton Town managed to somehow source up two goals compared to Salford City zero 14 shots to four with five of our shots being on target to zero. So yeah, like I said, not the best shot on target or conversion rate from Cheltenham, but it's still better than obviously the last performance and the performance before that. And it's just not good enough from Salford. You have to be honest, four shots with zero on target, one of them being a mistaken cross, I believe. You can't have that when you've got the majority of the ball. It's, we've seen it with a lot of big sides. Yes, you could just have an off day. But when you're having an attack in drought, something needs to change. Otherwise, they will not get into the playoff positions. On the lines of conjuring up opportunities, you have corners. Four corners to their three. It was pretty even in that regard. Nothing really came from corners, so there's nothing too much to mention about that. And fouls, well, they are well in Cheltenham's favour. A surprising 23 fouls committed in this match, with 14 in Cheltenham's favour, the nine going in Salford's way. 
But yeah, it was quite dirty. Like I said, I think there was three head injuries, nothing massive. And uh, yeah, apart from that, nothing really happened. It was beautiful press from Cheltenham while Salford tried to keep and maintain the ball. But uh, at the end of the day, it went Cheltenham's way. Typically, these videos would start off with the lineup, so then you'd obviously go into the live reaction. But as I've not got any live reaction today's video, because I didn't want to waste too much of your time, and I didn't want this video to drag on, because even though it's a great performance, I understand the live reaction can get boring for you guys. So, without further ado, before we move on to the next segment, this is the lineups. Charlton Town matched it with their also casual formation 3-5-2 with Griffiths in goal. The same back three once more with Long, Toza and Freestone. The midfield five of Hussey, Wright, Thomas, Circum and Blair. Obviously the two wing backs being Hussey and Blair with the two up front being Sam Smith and Alfie May. The three players to make it off the bench were Ellis Chapman, Andy Williams and Finn Azaz. Different minutes respectively, obviously 83rd, 84th and 88th. The players that did not make off the bench, however, were as follows. Scott Flinders, Indiana Vasilev, Tom Chamberlain and Grant Horton. Moving on to Salford City now, they played almost a Christmas tree formation with what's seemingly a 3-4-2-1. I do apologise if I butcher their goalkeeper's name, however, I'm going to go with Haladki. Uh, the back three of Turnbull, Eastham and Bernard. The two wing backs seemingly being Hunter and Torre. The two CDM deep line playmakers of Threlkeld and Lowe. The two attacking midfielders being Gotts and Wilson, with up front being Ian Henderson. On the bench you'll find Brandon Thomas Asante, Emmanuel Desui. Daniel Hawkins, Liam Luhan, Luke Burgess, Thomas James and William Evans. With the three players come off the bench being Emmanuel de Suerve, Brandon Thomas Asante and Thomas James. They all came off the bench in the 45th minute. Moving swiftly on now to the best and worst player for either team. Firstly, obviously starting with the home side, Cheltenham Town. And this one was a real toss-up because there are multiple players which I realistically could have given this to. I could have given it to Sean Long closely. I butchered him in the last game. He scored the own goal and he just has been putting up some reasonably poor performances. But, you know, he really deserved his praise. So he's not actually getting the best player for Cheltenham Town today. But, you know, he really upped his game. He decided the tempo. He made the tackles when he needed to. Obviously, he got that all-important goal to set Charlton's performance and to really determine how the game was going to go very early on. But I'm going to have to give it to Callum Wright because even though he didn't last the full 90 minutes, he really played probably his best game in the Charlton Town shirt. Obviously not getting a goal or an assist, but he actually won the free kick, which led to Cheltenham's second goal. So yeah, well done, mate. And that is why you win the best player for Charlton Town on this particular performance. Now moving on to the worst player for the club and, you know, it's once again a really controversial and difficult section of the video because it was one of those performances which no one really deserves the bad tag. But, you know, I'm going to have to go for the worst and the best if that makes any sense. I'm going to go with Connor Thomas because from what I saw of him, there was a few misplaced passes, obviously getting that yellow card as well in the game. And for a midfielder who's played really well, even though he did last the full 90 minutes, it wasn't his best performance in the Robin shirt. So that is why, you know, just out of a Consolation prize. This is the worst player for Cheltenham Town, Connor Thomas. Now, really moving on to the other side of the spectrum. No real Salford player had an absolutely amazing game, but I'm gonna have to give the best player for Salford to James Wilson. He won a couple free kicks. There was a few passing plays which he was involved in. Obviously, not getting a goal or assist because no one on the on the Salford side. I do apologise. Got one, but you know, from what I saw, I mean, he looked reasonably bright. Obviously, he was a young prospect. Didn't really achieve what he wanted to, but yeah, it's still a chance. But yeah, I'm going to give it to James Wilson being the best player on the pitch for Salford today. Then, obviously, moving to the worst player, I'm going to give it to Ibu Torre, just because, you know, he committed a few fouls. It wasn't his best performance, even though, once again, he was part of the passing plays. Everything that he seemed to be involved in kind of just pitted out and nothing really appreciative happened when he was on the ball. And considering when you're committing fouls and you're losing the ball, it's really just putting your team in a really bad position. That is why, for me, Ibu Torre wins the worst player on the pitch for Salford City today. Now moving on to the final section of the video and every single Cheltenham Town fan's favourite section at the moment, we have the table. Cheltenham Town remain top of the league, 36 games played, moving up to 19 wins, a 15 goal difference, 
positive, obviously, and a 65 points on the table. Cambridge United with 64 points after playing one game more and having a positive 21 goal difference. A very, very good and decent goal difference to them. And what's this? Forest Green Rovers have played one game yet less, yes, but they've dropped points. After missing a penalty, I believe they lose to Cambridge United, making the gap between them and top of the table to four points. That is right, we can lose and still be above them. Obviously, would they have the game in hand though, which, you know, if they win that, it obviously puts the gap only to one point, but, you know, we save that for a rainy day. Tranmere Rovers on 61 points as well in the same game, so they could leapfrog them if Forest Green have a bad result. Bolton on 60, Morecambe on 59, and Newport on 57. That is how the playoff spots look. With Sulphur City sat in ninth place, still remaining 35 games played on 51 points. They've still got a pretty healthy goal difference if anything happens in the table, but this was a very big game for them because obviously if we they beat us, we didn't pick up three points, they would have picked up three points, which means uh, considering there's a 14 point gap, that gap would go down to eight points. So they really missed their chance, but they still have a chance of getting into the prom promotion playoffs. Obviously, I think the title and things like that, etc., are already out of their hands. Cambridge United, even though being only one point behind us, have played that extra game, however, so Cheltenham are looking in a very, very healthy position. If we're actually looking at the form, though, Cheltenham Town have won three of their last five, but their next two games, they're big deciding games with Morecambe and Tranmere and then Grimsby. Grimsby should be a three points as they are practically already relegated, but Morecambe and Tranmere obviously respectively sat in, I believe, sixth and fourth place. So we're not celebrating too early, but I'm just saying if we get these fixtures out of the way and considering our results against other top six ties respectively, we could be in a very healthy position for automatics or at least the title come on boys. And with that good news out of the way, a very good Saturday night for all us Cheltenham fans. Three points on the board, two goals scored, zero conceded, still top of the table, Forest Green dropping points. Yes, come on, baby. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy the video, if you went around smashing that like button, subscribe to the channel and hitting that notification bell so you know when a video goes live. If you have any questions or queries, drop it down to the comment section because we love to interact with you guys and obviously audience interaction is key. There's going to be two videos like this on screen very shortly and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.